friends are heathens take it slow, slow, slow. what is up i am joe from workbench you guys haven't seen my face in a while so i figured i'd show that make it a little more personal show you guys the uh the new studio space this is backwards anyway let's get into it all right so this week we're gonna go over some quick tips so that we can work faster and smarter but not harder all right so the first one of these is offsetting motion so you got these boxes coming in, right? And let's say, ah, oh man, I got them too, too high to the top, right? So you can just do this, select all your keyframes, move them down, and you see over here that these stay moving up and down with it. They offset. What would normally happen would be this. You have angular motion, which is not what we're looking for. So you can do that. But what if you have them um, like this? Well, then you can't do both. You can do one at a time. You can click here. And move that up but that's kind of time consuming so what i do is i go over here some random place out in the end of the timeline where there's nothing else going on put some more keyframes there select all of them and now you can do it again so let's say you want to move left and right here we're gonna move it to where we're over here but i still want these to begin outside well what do i do there well you undo because that's not the way to do it and so they still move out here. So what we're going to do is instead of selecting the whole group, we're going to select this group, put my keyframe or put my uh, time marker right over here on the top of the other keyframes I put in. Move them out there. They still go out, but now they come over farther. And you can just dump these keyframes later on. Just delete them because you don't need them anymore. So that's offsetting motion. Next, mirror. So here's a nifty little trick. Let's say you want to get this on the other side exactly the same. Let's put up title safe with the single quote button on the keyboard. So what you might not know is that you can do math in these little boxes here. I'm going to duplicate this layer and then I am going to go right here. I'm going to hit the left arrow to go to the beginning because I want to keep that value there. I'm going to do 1920 minus hit enter. And there you go. Perfectly flipped to the other side. And you might think it only works that way. However, it works both ways. Let's duplicate this one. I'm going to do 1920 minus that. Boom. Other side. Easily mirror 1920 minus whatever. Or whatever your comp width is if it's not 1920. Next. Textiles. Say I got this one right here and I don't like the way that is. It's Adobe Garamond and it doesn't fit in with uh, Trade Gothic up here, right? I could select this layer and change it in here, but that's a waste of time. Even if it's a, unless it's a really long string of text, you can just go to another layer that you have, copy it, paste it into there, and then change it to whatever you want. Now it's testy. Next. Continue. This one I've done before in other tutorials, but you might not have seen it, so I'm going to show you again. So we have this motion in. I like the way it moves in, right? But I want it to keep going until it's off screen. Easy. Option click on the stopwatch over here and type in loop, out, continue. And now you know it goes all the way. It'd go all the way out if this comp was long enough, but it's not. So that's that. Next, use shapes. Unless you need to replace layers because shapes can't be replaced by anything else because Adobe didn't see fit to do that. So we'll get an error if we do that. But for everything else, you should just be using shapes. If you want to scale anything up, it's already vector. It just it works way better. You don't end up with a solids folder unless you really happen to use one or you need a null or something like that. I don't know why nulls are solids, but hey, I didn't program the program. The other benefit to using shapes is that if you have a shape, off the side of your comp window, you can actually still see where it is, which can be helpful if you're trying to transition scenes and you want other things to go close to where these are. And last, but certainly not least, always, always, always pre-comp logos, especially your client's logo. There are gonna be so few times where you get the client's logo exactly the size that they're hoping it's gonna be first try. So you can just go back in here and take it to a ridiculous level, come back and show them, oh yeah, you know what, it, it is too big. You're, you were right, designer, it, it is too big. Can you make it smaller? But but while you're making it smaller, could you actually swap it out? Because we've revised our logo since then and, and we'd like to see what the other one looks like. Oh, okay, well, you know what? I'll just do that real quick, here we go. There you go. Look, now it's changed everywhere. You don't have to go through comps and find them all. If you have it in here 15 times in different comps, you have to go to every comp and scale it. You have to go to every comp and do whatever. This way, you just change it once and it's done. So those are some of my quick tips for working in After Effects. I'm going to try to remember some more as I work. It's kind of hard to think of them on the fly, but I hope these helped you out. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comments down below, and make sure you follow us on workbench.tv for more great tutorials. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.